What's up, everybody? It's Alex from Heavy New York, and on the phone we got Mikey from Islander. Thank you for your time today, man. Dude, thanks for having me, bro. Yeah, I totally wish I could see you in Brooklyn because that's a kick-ass lineup, but I'll be in Kentucky at that time. I'm actually flying out tomorrow. What? Oh, it's a bummer. Yeah, I know, but, you know, festival season, you know, it happens. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, but it's so awesome to have you here. You have these two singles out, which is uh, I Want Sushi and My Friends. What I'm curious is, is this a clear representation of what the whole new Island record Islander record is going to sound like, or is it going to be a little more diverse and experimental? Um, uh, I wouldn't even say, I mean, I think it's more diverse. I wouldn't go as far as to be like crazy experimental or whatever, but it's definitely, um, those two songs are, are different. I believe from each other and the rest of the record and we're still um, in the studio right now putting a few more finishing touches on some of the songs mm -hmm. so um, yeah we uh, we just thought we would throw those out for fun and we had those ready for a while now we actually signed with a different label a while back and 11.7 heard our record before it came out and purchased it off of that label oh really so yeah so um, they threw us in the studio to write a few more songs to add to the record and um, yeah so we're, we're stoked to bring out something with 11.7 next year yeah definitely they're great people um, totally one thing I was uh, curious about is because I always thought that your music was fairly experimental I mean you know I remember hearing about you guys when you were announced for Mayhem Fest 2014 and uh, you know I thought like a song like New Colors was a very different from a song like Coconut Dracula it's fair to say you like to experiment and take a new approach to pretty much every song or even every album right it's not like you have a formula that you stick with definitely yeah we, we don't really yeah we, there's not like a formula we just right when we like at that moment and, and they're vibing on you know at the studio at that moment we don't really think too hard about it we just we know that we like catchy songs and we know we like heavy music and so we we've always kind of put those two things together and um we always tell people you know it's not like rock and science or whatever. it's just it's some dudes that really love um good songwriting and i mean just good songs and stuff and we uh we just try our best at it and have fun doing what we love. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Does a preconceived idea come in when songwriting, like we need to do this, or do things like kind of, is there like improvising involved and you kind of, everything kind of falls into place? Uh, a lot of improvising. Um, sometimes, you know, we'll, we're not like, I don't know how to explain it, but like we'll have like the label or somebody tell us like, hey, like, you know, we need a song for radio or whatever, but for us, we don't even put that pressure on ourselves in a way because we already love catchy music so much um, that, you know, we don't try to dumb it down or anything. We just write the songs that we, we love and that are hooky to our ears. So we, we hope that resonates with others. And, um, so yeah, I wouldn't say there's a formula. It's just more, um, again, some, some dudes that just love writing music together. Absolutely. Being a vocalist, do you need to hear music in order to come up with lyrics, or is there ever a time where, like, you have a concept or a subject matter in mind, and maybe that could help determine the outcome of the music? Oh, totally. Yeah, I do. I do um, both ways. Like sometimes one of the guys will bring a riff to me or something, and I'll be like, "Dude, that's sick," and I'll write something over it, or even have something that I've already written and, and kind of fit it in there, or. Uh, like depending on the vibe of the song, I'll kind of look at lyrics that might be darker or might be like, you know, hopeful or whatever the song calls for. Um, so I definitely write all the time, even melodies, like with my mouth, I'll, I'll record my mouth on my phone and do like the voice memos and um, come up with guitar melodies and all kind of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. What I find, uh, do you like to leave your lyrics open to interpretation? Because I remember I watched an interview with you on like what the meaning of the song Coconut Dracula was, which I thought was a really unique story and stuff. Do you like to leave your lyrics open to interpretation or do you like to maybe engage the listener in a story or maybe see things from your point of view? I like both. Um, yeah, that's something like, because there's certain things that's like I want to express and get like a point across and I hope that the listener understands it, but then there's, other songs where I do just, you know, I, I want the listener to relate to it how they want to. I don't want to tell them too much of like, here's what it means. You have to relate this way. Because I know for me, like, when I listen to an album or whatever from one of my favorite bands, like, they can't tell me, like, here's how you're going to relate to it. So I, I would never expect anyone to 
relate to our songs in the way the, the, the same way that I did. They haven't had the exact same experiences as me, and I haven't had the exact same experiences as them. So I definitely would say that I would prefer they come up with their own, not even meaning, but just I want them to have their own experience with it. Of course, and you'll drive yourself crazy if you're trying to enforce like an idea and like people don't see it the same way you are, no matter how little Absolutely. you are with it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Could maybe somebody else's perception on your music and their experience maybe change the outlook on how you look at your own music? If somebody had a completely different idea, does that maybe open your ideas up to maybe a new idea on how you looked at that song? Oh, definitely. Totally, totally. Um, I'm... I've done that, I think, to even other musicians. I've told them stuff, and they're like, oh my gosh, I've never seen my song that way. And, uh, people have done that to me. Um, I can't think of just a perfect example right now, but I know that um, fans have told me before the, what they thought a song meant, and I'm like, wow, that is so like beautiful, or hits the nail on the head in a completely different way than what I was even meaning, and maybe even means more to me now. Mm-hmm. D- um- What I find unique, when it comes to songwriting, do you have to put yourself in a certain place at a certain time, like, in order to come up with new ideas, or does the stuff, like, just come out of nowhere? Does inspiration just come out of nowhere? Uh, A little of both. Like, a lot of inspiration comes out of nowhere, but then when I start refining it, um, when I'm in the studio setting with my thoughts and whatnot, it's it's not like a dark place or whatever. It's just a very, very... I, I go to a place in my brain where... I am very, I'm I'm thinking about things very deeply when I'm in the studio and I want, I don't know, sometimes it's it's like a, not a scary place, but it's a place where I'm kind of like weirded out of my own thoughts and whatnot that I can just like let it be that deep or whatever. And then sometimes I'll write a song that people think is goofy, like I want sushi and it might have a deeper meaning than what people realize because they think it sounds fun. Really, the whole song about being a starving artist. <laughs> there you go. That that's actually a really a uh, good way of putting it. Because I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw that song title, I was like, oh, that that has to be maybe like a little bit on the humor side. I always thought that there was some humor behind your music, but then after you mentioning that, I was like, oh wow, that's actually much deeper than I thought it was. Yeah, now the whole song's about being a struggling artist, like and and um, doing this because you love it. It's, it's just about being in this because you love it. it has nothing to do with anything else. Of course. Yeah. Of course. One thing is that I know that Islander has toured with a variety of different styles of bands. Again, like I mentioned Mayhem Fest. I think you went on right after Arimha on that festival, which is like a black metal band, and then like Wretched was right after you. But then like you played with a band like Nonpoint, which is like very sort of like new metal, but now you're on tour with Bless the Fall and Escape the Fate. Have you noticed like a different type of audience or even a different reaction to your music depending on the tours you've been on? Totally, yeah. Like the first, you know, couple tours we did were with heavier bands or like we did some stuff with like punk bands and whatever when we first started touring and then we became friends with Cannibal Corpse on Mayhem and we're hanging out with those guys and then, you know, we toured with Corn and Papa Roach and P.O.D. and kind of did like you know we've done the radio stuff and we've direct supported for Atreyu and now we're out direct supporting for Escape the Saint Bless the Fall um, for their co-headliner and yeah we just love you know all these different types of music as like personal like interest and we don't look at like we're a certain type of band that has to be stuck in a certain you know niche we just love walking the world Mm-hmm. There's so many more types of tours that we haven't got to do that we want to do. Mm-hmm. Do you sometimes maybe like adjust your set list depending on the tour you're on? Like if you're on a tour with a much heavier band, you would like maybe play a heavier set list. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we still, I mean, we still do us and give them us, but we we like to become all things, all people in the sense that you know we we get up there and we say, well, let's let's show them this side of us because this is the side that they're probably going to be attracted to and it's not um, you know these aren't songs we're making up for specific tours these are songs off of the same album it's just there's certain things that can resonate differently with certain people Mm -hmm, definitely I remember when I saw you guys on the 10 years star set tour like that's a very like hard rock I guess for lack of better words mainstream crowd but I've never seen like that crowd interaction I mean people were actually hardcore dancing at that show which I thought was pretty uh, unique (laughs) 
Absolutely. Yeah. And that led me into my next question because I always thought that seeing you live is a completely different experience than just listening to you guys. And is there like a similar energy that you channel into your live presence as you do like in the studio or a vocal booth or is it just a completely separate game altogether? uh, We were actually talking about, it's fun you mentioned that we were talking about that last night. Um, I think that it's a much different thing being in the vocal booth than being on stage. I think that a lot of times people that don't think that they're going to be fans of Ireland or see us live or vice versa, and they're like, oh my gosh, like, I do like this. This is my thing. Because um, I think that sometimes people are very surprised at the live show or how passionate we are about our live show. And then, um, people that, have, you know, just heard the music, they can't fully understand what Islander is until they've seen it because our music isn't really to be listened to. We always tell people, you know, it's more of an experience. Like, we're not up here being an audio animatronic band at, like, Chuck and Cheese. Like, we want the crowd to know that they come to the show. They are the show. Like, the show is more entertaining when they're into it, no matter what we do. It's just practice until they show up. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. do you try to execute the material exactly how people are hearing it on the album or do you like change things up and maybe freestyle a little bit on stage as well I would definitely say we we freestyle I mean we we play the songs you know correctly but um, there's a lot of room for ad lib and I never know what's going to happen in our set like the other night we ended up with a ladder on our set climbing it um, (laughs) muffins tossing muffins into the crowd and handing food out um, every night, I just I just want every night to be its own experience. Um, even though the songs are familiar with people that know them, it's definitely not going to be the same show every night by any means. Yeah, and that has to keep it interesting for you, right? Oh, it does because I never know what's going to happen. Like the other night, I had no clue that we were going to end up with like a, a ladder on stage and and muffins and pita bread and like I just I try to see what is around me and we just make a show out of that. Oh my god, that sounds pretty awesome, but God bless the staff at that venue. (laughs) (laughs) Hopefully most of the food ended up in people's mouths instead of on the floor. There you go, there you go. Um, Another question that I was um, really uh, curious about actually is, it's like my favorite question to ask people because it's always the hardest question for them to answer, is how do you know when a song is done? (laughs) This is funny because um, one of my friends, I don't know if he made this term up or whatever, this little quote, but it's one of my favorite quotes. Um, a song is never finished, it's only abandoned. So Yeah, I get that every time. Yeah. <laughs> so a song is actually never done. It, you could you can write another verse, you can write it, you can add another chorus for eternity, but you, you eventually have to abandon it and just and you have to be satisfied and, and settle with it where it's at. Yep. Absolutely. Not settle, not settle for something, but you have to, you have to personally, in your heart, be, you know, set with what what you've uh, abandoned. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the final question I wanted to ask you is: I, I mentioned this before we started rolling. Is that I really enjoyed that track you did with Vexes, that song "No Color." I thought that was a really unique yeah. track, and I loved your vocal style. You know, like how you rapped over it because you're able to rap, you're able to sing, you're able to scream. Kind of like two questions in one. But uh, first off, is was it a completely different mind frame singing with a different band, or was it, or is it just like a usual art to performing that just applies to anything that you're singing over? I think, it, I think it was the usual. Sometimes it's easier for me to, to write stuff that I guess vocal on people's stuff because I don't know how to explain this because I'm, I'm still putting the same heart, passion, and love into it because um, I don't I don't believe in half you know asking art or whatever. But I think that for me, um, I definitely find it easier because I can take myself out of it for a moment and look at it like they're banned and like I'm just having fun rather than thinking too hard about it sometimes and with Vexes I remember when they sent me that track um, I can't remember if I told them this or not because I didn't want them to think I was being lazy about it I uh, I literally wrote those lyrics and that whole part probably in about 10 minutes really the night but yeah the night before I got on a plane to head to the studio to, to record that song I I picked I picked up the track I remember I was sitting in my man cave and I wrote all the lyrics down on my memo on my little notepad on my phone on my iPhone and uh, 
I wrote ten, about 10 minutes and then I went to bed and got on the plane. <laughs> wow. I'm looking at that so, so much I, differently now. Yeah, I don't, I don't like to take too much time um, on lyrics and stuff because I want, I want them to sound kind of like they were new to me when I was recording them because I feel like it always leaves that freshness for people even if they don't know it does. It, it has something about it. Like, if you listen to Violence and Destruction, um, our first full-length album, the song Violence and Destruction, I think I wrote those lyrics in 20 minutes or less. Wow. Like, literally in the vocal booth, writing them down, and just singing them first take, first take, first take. Like, and that was it. <laughs> That's insane. I mean, hey, it, it captures a moment, you know what I mean? You work too long on something, it's going to get stale real quick. So Exactly. exactly. That, that's, that's, you, you just hit the nail on the head. That's the whole reason we do that. Yeah, and it says so in your live performances, and even listening to you, I feel like it's a different experience. I can, I can listen to you guys in the morning, and then I can listen to you guys at a party. I can listen to you guys, you know, at a funeral. Who knows? Dude, thank you so much. I mean, it means a lot. Yeah. And I'd imagine that, like, working with them, that had... Because being that you have many different usages of your voice, is it still... Is it, like, a separate, like, I guess, emotion or, like, even just, like, a separate version of you? Or because it's your voice, it's all kind of, like, the same thing? I think it's all the same thing. It's, um... I don't know. I just... I don't even think about it. I don't think about whether I'm screaming or singing or rapping or whatever I just I feel like that's all who I am and it just kind of comes out of my mouth that way there you go so uh, before we go I want to thank you so much for your time today um, you know this is going to be a great tour again again I'm sorry I'm missing you in Brooklyn um, is there just uh, anything else with Islander you would like to promote like when can we be expecting the new Islander record coming out on 11-7 um, we're going to be bringing the new album out for sure in 2020 um, I know that we've you know, been telling people it's coming, it's coming, but we, we really mean it's coming. We've just been working on it so that we can give people the best eye on the record and, um, and hopefully be heard by more and more people. And uh, we're super excited. I think it's the best stuff that I've ever been a part of. So I'm definitely hoping it resonates with people. But, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mike. Everybody, we are here with Mikey of Islander. New music coming out on 11-7 in 2020. Be on the lookout. This is Alex from Happy New York. We'll see you next time.